Thousands of brides and bridegrooms assembled from 160 different nations of the world are joining in this sacred global wedding. The Unification Church, better known as the Moonies, are a new religious movement that were founded in South Korea in 1954 by a man named Reverend Moon, or to his followers, True Parent. According to the Unification Church Holy Wedding Tradition, our beloved True Parents will lead three cheers of Manse. Let's make our Manse penetrate the entire world. Manse! Their beliefs are derived from the Bible. As Reverend Moon told his followers, he was carrying on Jesus' work. They claim to number over one million, with branches worldwide, including the UK. We were allowed to spend a day within the movement and met Michael, a 21-year-old second-generation member who had recently married in one of their mass wedding ceremonies in Korea, where members meet for the first time and are then married on the same day. Good morning, Jake. Michael. How's it going, man? I'm good, I'm good. How are you? I'm not too bad, thank you. Thanks for having us. Yeah, So opening the day, what, is, uh -huh. what does that entail? Opening the day uh, consists of singing, uh, praying, uh, reading some of Reverend Moon's words. Now I offer a bow to true parents. <laughs> a big old bow. It is, yeah. It is. This is called the Chong Song Gyeong. It's a compilation of Reverend Moon's speeches. So the Bible written 2,000 years ago, yeah. Life of Jesus. This is, I suppose in layman's terms, an update through God speaking to it's, yeah. Reverend Moon, true father. It's an update. It's also new, not just an update, it's new stuff. So it's things that Jesus couldn't talk about yet. We hear uh, Reverend Moon talking about the ideal family and how, um, how man should relate to woman, uh, how, we, how we can achieve um, world peace substantially. There are many topics. With the emphasis of God encompassing both male and female, and with the true family aspect of um, man and woman, you know, being together. What happens if someone is homosexual? Can they not be part of the true family? Um, it's, uh, it's a sensitive topic, but essentially, um, by design of the universe, we believe that God created um, man and woman uh, as aspects of himself. And when they grow to perfection, they should, um, they should come together in love and unite with each other. But can that not happen with two people of the same sex? Um, we, we think that it's not how God intended for the universe to be um, because hmm, it's very clear that there is still a right and a wrong and there's a way that you should conduct your life and there's a way you shouldn't conduct your life. You have to promise within your lifetime to reach perfection or you have to really strive to reach perfection after I give you the blessing, we say, the marriage. And what does uh, perfection look like? 
<laughs> Easy question. It looks like, it looks like that, that man over there, man and woman there. Reverend Moon and his wife. Mm, yeah. You pick your favourite one. We are the youth, soldiers of the truth, called by a God on high. Now is the time, march to the world, sounding the battle cry. Too long the dark night of sin, held in fear the people of the world, will drive the darkness away. Bringing in the new day, lift high, lift high, lift high. Heavenly Parent, I pray that I can really uh, strive to be a better person every single day, and I pray that I can uh, reach perfection in my lifetime. Heavenly Parent, is something that I really want to strive to achieve. Heavenly Parent, please help me to really be a good person. Please help me to really be someone that's devoted to you. I'm so sorry that I'm not good enough. I'm so sorry that I'm inadequate and I'm unqualified, Heavenly Parent. I'm sorry. After the day was opened, we then went to a holy place of worship in a nearby park and were joined by another member of the church. So we're just going to go to the holy ground. Uh, it's a place where Reverend Moon um, kind of sanctified this area around this tree in Hyde Park. And it's a very special place for unificationists. And can you feel the presence of Reverend Moon when you're there? Yeah, I, I can. So it's kind of like your Mecca? Yeah, it is kind of mini Mecca. Mini Mecca. <laughs> a bit less crowded. <laughs> <laughs> so we like to come here and pray. Once a day is, yeah, is good. It's a special place for us to really connect with God and connect to the heart of uh, our true Father, our Reverend Moon. What do you do when you come here? We like to hold hands and pray together. Do, you, is that, do I have to join in? Yes, please. Sure. So we can pray. pray. Um, so please join me in prayer. The Heavenly Parent, True Parents, thank you so much for this beautiful day. Uh, we could be here at this holy place, this holy ground that our true parents um, really blessed. Our true parents' heart is here. We could be here with uh, our brother Jake and we can yeah, just connect with you now, Heavenly Parent. Heavenly Parent, please help us to uh, grow internally and externally. I pray all this in my name, uh, on behalf of everyone here. Uh, as well, in my name, Michal Schroeder, Blessed Central Family, RG. Thank you. After praying, we then went back to the communal home to chat about Michael's relationship with his wife and his life within the movement. Yeah. So this is bedroom yeah sorry it's not much but and it's you shared yeah it's shared with another member i'm on bottom bunk he's on top bunk but what happens um you know when your wife comes to stay uh, <laughs> uh she's gonna be staying in a she's gonna rent a room for, for a few nights okay yeah but where does the the conjugal side come into that because that's you know an important part uh it's a bit difficult um, because she can't live here at the moment, so it's a bit difficult to yeah, arrange that. Yes. Do you want to maybe show us around some of your stuff and your space as well a bit? Yeah. Pumping the weights? Yeah. Living at home, I didn't, I didn't have any kind of proper weights. I was using kind of some sketchy water bottles in a bag type of thing so what's the fish names i don't know actually they were they were here before my time reverend moon reverend moon and... maybe yeah you could say that so do you have any photos of you and your wife mm -hmm. we can see what's her name again atsumi 
So one sort of preconception people have about Unification Church or Moonies, as you're kind of known as, is the what you guys call the matching process, where you go to Korea with a group of hundreds or thousands and people are matched together to be man and wife forever. And obviously I know you went through that process yourself and just, how does it work? It's, it's, it's as it sounds really, it's as you probably imagine it. There's a room in the palace and we go there, uh, sisters sit down on the left hand side, brothers on the right hand side, and, you know, one by one, like row by row, we were asked to stand up. And then on my particular occasion, it was the first time, usually sisters get to choose, but they said, brothers, be brave, you have to choose. So then the brothers suddenly started walking one by one, and then they just stood facing the sisters. And then there was a pause, and everyone's watching. Like incre the, in the atmosphere was incredibly tense, because you have to make a decision, a self selfless decision, um, and you have to kind of try to connect with who God is trying to guide you to pick. And there was a stalemate for, you know, no, no one was picking for a long time. And then after looking, scanning for a long time, one brother finally put his hand, hand out to a sister. And she just, you know, looking at his face and then down to the hand and to his face again. And then eventually she accepted. She, she you have equal responsibility. So the brother puts his hand out in the gap between them and then the, the sister she has the responsibility to accept or decline so she accepted and then from that point it's it's done you have to your eternal partners with this person essentially wow it's as simple as that <laughs> so yeah it's a, it's a bit scary and how did your one go this lady came up to me one of the leaders she asked me who would i like from what country so I said Japan, and she took me over to the girl I made slightly longer eye contact with. I felt it was right, so I put my hand out to this girl, and yeah, she accepted me. We were taken to a room to chat, and it was the most amazing talk with another person I've ever had. It was like meeting your best friend after having been separated for 20 years or so. It's just asking simple questions like, what's your name? But I didn't really mind if she spoke English or not. I knew that we could kind of work it out. Uh, there are other things than being able to talk. You can kind of communicate with your kind of heart and other means. Michael had arranged to Skype his wife and let us hang around. <laughs> How are you? Mm-hmm. <laughs> I'm recording now. You're so pretty, you know. You should you should not feel embarrassed to be recorded. So pretty. <sighs> Sometimes father would match people from opposite mm. places. Mm -hmm. Different culture, so to bring about world peace like this. Also, sometimes enem enemy nations, like my parents are enemy countries, so mm. they have to like forgive each other. Tiny yes. bit, yeah. Mm. So, yeah, do you think, hmm, mm. what do you think about this topic? Mm. Yeah, uh, mm. I think he wanted to make a good, mm. good seed mm. for generation, for generation. 
Later on, we then went to a local university campus as part of his daily witnessing routine, where Michael spreads the word about the unification movement. So this is the bit where you prefer to do the witnessing, right? Yeah, so people what, relaxing. People. What do you look for when you want to approach someone to begin the conversation? Do you look for a group? Do you look for an individual? Do they have a certain demeanor? Or what, what's the telltale signs? Uh, it goes on feeling. Like, I don't... Do you think it's God guiding you? Yeah, I'd, I'd say that. I'd, I'd pick anyone based on how I feel, if I feel it's right. And if we go in a pair, actually, um, the other person, they feel who's right, and they say, why don't you try this person? And then the other person goes and talks to them. Well, I can be your, your partner. Yeah, OK. So you can, you can choose people for me that you think are... What about this guy? He's looking at us. Yeah, OK. Hi, sir. Hi, do you have five minutes for a short interview for a society here at Imperial? Uh, three minutes, Max. Do you have five minutes for a short interview? Hi there, sir. Hi, do you have five minutes for a short interview for a society here at Imperial? First question is, are you satisfied with Imperial? Yeah. Yeah? yeah? What in particular are you satisfied with? What do you like about Imperial? Um, Where do you see yourself in ten years' time? That's a good question. <laughs> what kind of character would you like to have in ten years' time? What kind of person would you like to be? What social problem are you most concerned with in the world at the moment? Social problem? What kind of world problem are you most concerned with? What's closest to your heart? Something... Uh, right now, terrorism. Where do you see yourself in 10 years' time? Um, I'll be 31. Mm -hmm. God. Thank you so much for this interview. Okay. It's on behalf of a society here at Imperial called CARP. Uh, thank you so much for this interview. Uh, it was on behalf of a leadership society here at Imperial. CARP is a society here at Imperial. So it's a society looking to raise young leaders from university students so they can influence society in some positive way. If I could give you a flyer. Yeah, of course. Um, yeah, and yeah, maybe hopefully, hopefully see you in the future at one of our events. Maybe yeah, it sounds yeah. like that. Would it be possible to take your email so I can invite you formally? Yes. It's yeah. okay? Yeah. If I'm honest, it feels a bit mischievous to me. Okay. That's how I'd interpret mm. it. If you came up to me and I was sitting on that bench and mm. said to me, I see. Can I talk to you about oh, how we can, you know, give you a survey about what it's like at the uni and talk about what's your worst world issue of the day and how you can be a better person? Mm. I would feel a little bit deceived, I think. Why not just say from the outset, hello, my name's Michael, I'm from the Unification Church. You mentioned Unification Church, they don't want to talk to you. They just, they block it. Even if you want to have a nice conversation with them or, you know, just have general chit chat with them or you know talk about how they're doing they just block it off when you start talking to students uh -huh. sort of your average student is it peculiar i suppose in the sense that when you look at most students you've had a very different experience so you lived at home mm. obviously you're part of a religious movement which inhibits you from doing certain things do you kind of look with any sort of envy or jealousy of your peers because they were kind of, you know, uni is often this time, you kind of let your hair down a bit, you go a bit crazy, yeah. you know? Was there any of that in you? Did you ever want to think, oh, I want to experience something new, you know? You can say that, Jake. And I don't say that to be nasty. I no, just say no, no. Uh, It seems to me it's very inhibited I'm... what you can and can't do. So therefore, when you talk mm. to someone just about the aspect of living and the struggles of life, you can mm. only speak from experience, from a very mm. limited place. That makes sense. Yeah, I mean, I, there's, a, there's a saying, a wise man learns from his mistakes and a wiser man learns from the mistakes of others. I've seen my friends, I've seen my parents, the mistakes that they've made in their life, and I feel I can, I can, I've learnt from their mistakes without having to make the same ones, or without having to experience the same kind of difficulties they have. So, in some respects, yeah, I would agree. I haven't experienced kind of all the difficulties in life, but in other respects, I've also experienced many amazing things in life through the movement. So. Okay. How do you think today went, Michael? How does it feel to have opened up your life to me? Yeah, it feels yeah, liberating in a way, talking about my faith with someone else. I'm very happy that you know, I could share 
share about my life and uh, about you know, what I believe. Please wave goodbye to our true parents.